The medieval town of Carcassonne in the southwest part of France is such an important historic landmark that the castle and entire walled town are on the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. It's surrounded by two fortified walls with a castle in the center. And within the walls is a small village in a pedestrian zone with historic buildings, some of which date back to the 12th century. Google Earth provides a spectacular view of the old town, showing very clearly the double wall that goes all the way around the medieval center and the castle and the turrets. There's a tall inner wall and a lower outer wall providing two layers of protection for the old medieval city. The main entrance through the massive walls is into this fortified gate with a projecting barbican that has stone walls along both sides for protection and drawbridge to create an effective barrier at this potential weak spot and keep out any attackers. We'll have a lot more to say about this gate later in the program when we walk on the wall all the way around the fortress. But first we want to enter the town and take a walk along its beautiful lanes, look at the shops, and generally get oriented. Right away, as soon as you get through the gate, you'll find yourself on the main street of town. It's for pedestrians, no cars allowed inside the old town except a few service vehicles and some of the local residents. You will find it's very rewarding to stroll about the lanes that are inside the village. It's not a large city by any means. The village itself is about 400 meters long and just over 200 meters wide, so it's easy to walk around and get a nice feeling for the whole place. And yet, there's enough here that you could easily spend a full day or even two days exploring it. There cannot be very many places in the world that produce so profound an effect upon the imagination and the sense of beauty and history as the old walled town of Carcassonne, especially when you are walking along its wall. Stepping back into the 13th century, when this town was attacked by the Pope from Rome, more about that crazy story coming up a bit later. The town offers historical programs featuring costume guides for visitors and also for the local school kids. Uh, there's something about castles that appeals to the kid in all of us. It really fires up the romance of the past. And it's really helped along by these costume guides who put on a show for the little kids and tell them some of the many legends associated with the spectacular castle of Carcassonne. Within the walls, we have an actual functioning town with shops, there's several small hotels, and there's 50 homes for the local residents as well, with a small plaza in the center hosting some outdoor terrace restaurants and a vast pedestrian zone that you'll want to explore. The main street we walked in on could keep some visitors busy for many hours, maybe for a couple of days right here on this one block. So many shops, mostly souvenirs, but there's a variety of all kinds of goods, clothing and food. One of the nicest and most popular spots in town is Place Marcou, with its outdoor restaurants and bars, cafes, tables all around it. This is a happy place. It's quiet during this non-meal hour, but during lunch and dinner, it gets very busy. Let's have a look at night, and you'll see people are out enjoying themselves with a fine meal and some good drinks. It's not just for visitors. Local residents come up from down below to also enjoy the atmosphere. In addition to the fortified old town, there is a large new town down at the bottom of the hill that you can walk to in about 15 minutes and do a little bit more exploring. There are some lovely shops, pedestrian streets, and the open market. It's well worth visiting. And this is another reason for you to be spending a couple of days in Carcassonne. And there's a good selection of affordable hotels in the new town. We'll take a stroll down there later in the program. But of course, your main focus will be the old town, and one of the highlights is certainly the castle. It is one of the top attractions in the country. In the center of the walled town of Carcassonne 
is the castle and so of course when you're visiting here you must go inside this medieval castle it dates back to the 13th and 14th century and it's a remarkable intact structure from the middle ages the castle is one of the most exciting features of the town and you can go inside it's open to the public as a museum it was the medieval home of the lord of this region before entering the castle, enjoy a view from the terrace and notice those wooden extensions from the top of the wall. They enable defenders to drop rock, burning oil, and shoot arrows at any attackers trying to get up the walls. This was the first castle to use such wooden platforms. The castle is a fortress inside the walled fortress with a dry moat around it crossed by a stone bridge leading to the entrance. The front gate surrounded by a semicircular barbican wall providing more defense. Another Google Earth view shows the overall castle shape with its central courtyards and fortified walls and towers. This castle was first built from the early 12th century, but the fortifications have a much longer history that I'll be explaining during the program as we walk around the wall. Once you've paid the small admission fee, you're welcome to enjoy the various courtyards and also enter inside the castle where they have a historical museum. We'll see more of the museum later, but for now we want to get moving and start the walk along the castle wall, which is included in the admission fee for the castle. Hold on to your museum admission ticket because after you've finished walking the walls, you can come back inside and see more of the castle and museum later. We are going to take you on a walk along the entire length of those walls in the old fortified town of Carcassonne. Another Google Earth view provides that perspective showing how the wall goes around the entire old town. And a photograph from the tourist information office shows the many buildings that are within the walls. As you walk along on top of the wall, you also get nice views looking out at the city beyond and some beautiful landscapes of vineyards, olive groves, and green rolling hills. We did the first part of the wall walk with a castle guide. And welcome to the city de, of Carcassonne. We leave the castle to go and walk upon the battlements of the wall, of the western wall of the city, and we'll end up by the church. Once you have paid admission to the museum, you could do this walk on your own, or they have an audio guide that you can use, or make a reservation and go with one of the castle guides. From the top of the wall and from outside the walls give you a real good perspective. It's one of the defining qualities of this city created by the medieval walls around it. Looking inside the old fortified town at some of the gardens and courtyards and lovely buildings, including a deluxe hotel, the Hotel de la Cité. We'll take you inside that hotel later and describe some other hotel options for you. The millions of tourists who walk around the walls of Carcassonne do so mainly in order to visit a medieval town. But only a few of them do so in order to discover one of the most important sets of fortifications of the late Roman Empire. No one is quite sure when people first arrived at this location, but the first signs of settlement in this region have been archaeologically dated to about 3500 BC and the hill became an important trading place in the 6th century BC on this rocky spur overlooking the valley of the Ode River and the ancient routes linking the Atlantic with the Mediterranean and the Iberian Peninsula, a very strategic location. A little more history coming up later. You can walk all the way around this fortified town, either on top of the wall or between the walls or outside the wall. There are three basic sections of the wall walk. We've just done part one on the rampart. Next, we'll walk on the outer wall and then continue between the two walls called the list and then come around back to where we started at the castle. But at the end of the first section of the ramparts, before we continue walking, we have a chance to visit the Basilica of Cacazon. Say goodbye to our local guide. What a bonus you can see to time your museum visit to the castle so that you also take the wall walk. 
Originally, this was a cathedral back in the 10th and 11th centuries. It was built in a Romanesque and Gothic style and is the oldest building in Carcassonne. The church in Carcassonne is something that you must visit while you're here. It's a Gothic church. When it was first built, it was the cathedral of the town, and there was no new town down below at that time. It was only Carcassonne. This was the seat of their bishop, and it's beautifully preserved. It's an amazing structure with the stained glass, very famous stained glass over the main altar, and the Gothic pointed arches and stone construction all around you. It's especially nice in the morning because then the sun is beaming right into the windows. But any time of day, it's free and open throughout the day, so it's very easy to come visit. It's a national monument of France. It was formerly a cathedral until 1801 when it was replaced by a more modern cathedral down in the lower town. The original church is thought to have been constructed in the 6th century during the reign of Theodoric the Great, the ruler of the Visigoths. And in 1096, Pope Urban II visited the town and blessed the stones that were being used to build the new cathedral. And construction was completed in the first half of the 12th century. Originally constructed in the Romanesque style, the church was enlarged between 1269 and 1330 in the Gothic style. Carcassonne was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997, and as part of their justification, they have a brilliant description of Carcassonne, which we're going to share partly with you now. They explain that the main body of the cathedral consists of a central six-bayed nave with an interrupted barrel vault and two narrow side aisles rising to almost the same height and fully vaulted. The transverse arches of the barrel vaulting spring alternately from square columns surrounded by embedded columns and round pillars. The original Romanesque choir was replaced in the latter 13th century by an imposing high Gothic structure. This is a large transept with a six-sided apse at its eastern end. The church contains some important sculpture. The stained glass in the windows of the apse and the transept is of exceptionally high quality. Three periods can be distinguished. The late 13th century, early 14th century, and the 16th century. This church could be easily missed even though we're in a very small village because it's at the far end and it doesn't look too spectacular on the outside. It's that rather plain Gothic exterior with no flying buttresses. There's some gargoyles, but the interior is really quite spectacular. You can see the church location in that white circle in another Google view that shows you the route that we're taking now between the high inner wall and shorter outer wall. Perhaps you've noticed there have been some staircases along this wall, but really it's not too strenuous. Anybody can take this walk. It's just a total of three kilometers. You can easily do it in under an hour, relaxing and enjoying the views. Most of it is quite level. This illustration gives you a very clear idea of how these two walls were situated, with the big towers providing the defenders fortified positions to fire at the attackers. This section of the wall is open to the public at no charge. It's all free. And it is a fascinating stretch of wall because we're walking on that lower outer wall just in front of the high bastion. And in between is the open area they call the list, which was also part of the defensive fortifications, sometimes used for storage of their weapons. And during times of peace, they would hold jousting tournaments here with knights on horseback and lances trying to knock each other down. It was the days of chivalry. Both sets of walls underwent reconstruction during the final phase of building in the late 13th century, with more towers added and enlarged. Another view of that same section from outside the lower wall, standing in what would have been a dry moat for one more ring of protection. We've now completed most of the walk around the walls from the castle, passing the church, and now we've arrived at the Narbonne Gate that we'll describe in a moment. From here, we'll continue around the rest of the wall, 
Or if you wish, you could cut out and head right back into town, returning to the castle where you began. Anytime you have a walled city, you still have to have some kind of entrance. But that's a potential weak point in the fortifications. So they have to have a gate that's highly protected with walls all around it. Here you can see a side view of the Narbonne Gate with the fortified Barbican coming out. And that's actually protecting a drawbridge that could be raised to further strengthen the defenses. And then the big tower up behind it so that the bowmen can be shooting down on the enemies. And there's trap doors that can drop boiling oil and rocks and boulders onto people trying to attack. They can close the gate, dropping a portcullis, and trap the invaders inside the Barbican, then shoot down on them in this stone enclosure, all to protect the entrance to Carcassonne. You'll see this complicated entrance solve the problem of how do you get through a wall while keeping the attackers out. The Narbonne Gate functions like the front door of the city nowadays, and on the opposite side is the Ode Gate, which leads to the new town. It takes just five minutes to walk from one side of the village to the other. From here, you could walk through the Narbonne Gate, then walk up the main little shopping lane of town. Hey, boy. Hello. It will lead you back to the castle, but there is one more part of the wall that you can visit. Well, now we're going to continue around this final section where we are going to see some evidence of the early Roman wall. Once again, we have an outer wall and then a clear space and a higher inner wall with an interesting gate leading inside the old town. It's a medieval feature, which is believed to be where the ancient Roman gate was also located as seen here from inside the wall. These big walls are from the medieval period but they are built on a foundation of earlier Roman walls that date back to the third and fourth centuries, as proven by that unique Roman technique of using brick in construction of their stone walls. The medieval builders inserted foundations underneath the Roman wall to stabilize them, as you see in the circle. The original Roman walls were three meters thick and six to eight meters high, characteristic of the late Roman style, with rubble cores faced with stone and bricks on a concrete foundation. This route brings us around to the north end of the walls where we get some nice views looking out across the rest of Carcassonne. The city has a population of about 50,000, nearly all of them living outside the walls. We are approaching the end of this part of the walk as we arrive back at the castle. We're walking through some foundations and arches that used to hold up one of the banquet rooms of the castle. It's a heavy medieval kind of Gothic architecture with those pointed arches. We have reached an extremely elaborate part of the wall with very tall stone walls and pointed Gothic arches. It's a battlement that's connecting the outer wall with the castle because up above is where the Lord of the Manor was living. It had to be very well protected. One branch of the path now goes down the hill, so let's have a look from below back at the castle. It is a classic viewpoint, but back in 2018, something unusual happened. A modern art installation by the renowned French Swiss artist Felicio Verini called Eccentric Concentric Circles. It's gone now. Here's how that castle view normally looks. So when you're in Carcassonne Old Town, you also want to go visit the New Town, and you can get there by going right out the gate. It's the Ode Gate, and there's a walkway that takes you down a 15-minute path into the New Town. It's not so new. It was built in the 1300s. Go on down, take a left turn. This Ode Gate is quite a spectacular medieval intersection with crisscrossing lanes and tall walls. The view of the castle as you come down the path is spectacular, and it gets better and better as you walk along. It's a very easy walk downhill, and you immediately get some beautiful views looking back up at the castle and the walled fortification of the old town. Many visitors stay at hotels in the new town, which has many more accommodations than the old town. And so they'll be walking this route just to get up the hill to see the old town. 
So the castle makes a perfect background for a group shot from the bridge across the Ode River. That's one of many reasons that we've come down. Nice view along the Ode River as well. A bunch of ducks swimming and there are people fishing. We're walking across a very old stone bridge and into the new town. It's very easy to find your way to the main street, the Rue de Verdun. You'll notice this is not a pedestrian zone. It's a main thoroughfare and yet how narrow there's only one lane. There are nice sidewalks and barriers to protect the pedestrians from the automobiles going by. And we'll see in a moment there are some lovely pedestrian lanes in the new town. But this Rue de Verdun is a wonderful street. It's got creperies, it's got bars, cafes, shops. And it will lead you to the new town's main square, Place Carnot. Here's how it looks on an average day. A lovely tree-shaded spot with outdoor tables and restaurants around it. But three times a week, an amazing transformation happens. There's a produce market down in the center of the new town, the Bastide it's called, at Place Carnot. And it happens every Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and Saturday morning, especially big on Saturday morning. We're here on a Thursday morning and it's fruits and vegetables. So-called modern side, actually this part of town was built back in the 13th century by King Louis, Saint Louis. He's considered one of the greatest heroes in the nation's past. He built up the Bastide, it's called. Oh, and they've got some great restaurants around that town square. Well, this has been the economic center of the region. In fact, it's still the capital of the region. And they were really noted for production of fabric back in the 13th century, 14th, 15th centuries even. And then the main focus shifted to production of wine. So the Bastide, the lower town, also had a wall around it. it dates back to the 1300s, the 1400s. Just like the old town up on the hill of Cacazon, they've got the gateway and the original wall still standing. There's a broad tree-lined boulevard just outside the wall as we walk along. Has an underground parking garage hidden away as well. So you can see there is much more to Cacazon than just the old town. This new town is quite attractive in its own right. One of its main lanes is just for pedestrians with lots of shops and restaurants along it. You'll also find some lovely parks with fountains and statues, making this new town a fine place to visit and stay for a while. And it has a supply of hotels that would make a good accommodations for your visit. Near the train station on the edge of town, you'll find a beautiful waterway, the Canal du Midi. It was built in the 17th century, linking the Atlantic with the Mediterranean and used to transport goods and people. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, now used by pleasure boaters and tourists for excursions along its 360 kilometers. The locks are used to raise and lower the water level of the canal to allow boats to navigate easily, attracting a lot of visitors making a boat journey. We're going to stay the night here and go have a look at the castle. The canal has 328 structures along its length, including locks, aqueducts, bridges, spillways, and tunnels. And you can sign up for a one or two hour round trip excursion from Carcassonne. Now we're heading back up the hill to the old town and it's just going to take us another 15 minutes. We cross the same bridge have another view of the river and here's a side view of that very old stone bridge and this is the simple route we're taking just from the main town square back up across the river and up the hill and here we get some more lovely views of the fortress itself. They had a fortified walkway that came down from the old town you see here with the walls on both sides of it that enabled them to walk down to the river and get some more water and be protected at the same time from any sort of attack, any ambush that might spring up.
Looking down on that same structure from above, we can see clearly how the sides are fortified with crenellations and walkways for the defenders. Of course, they have uh, water supply up in the town, but more often they would also come down to the river to get even more water. And also just to walk down into the lower town as well. That way everything was protected throughout. And the lower town had a wall around it as well. You can't really walk up there nowadays. It's a dead end, it doesn't go anywhere. But it's nice to look at it from down below. We still have our ticket for the castle, which allows us to go back inside again, because now we want to take you into the historical museum. It's a relatively small museum with five main galleries, so it's quite easy to walk through and enjoy different time periods, extending from the ancient Roman up into the Gothic period. And it's like being back in the Middle Ages. You walk from one room to the next. The arcade room has a Gothic window frame as well as these architectural fragments of columns. And the next room over is called the round room because of the barrel vaulted ceiling. And the next room over is called the Romanesque room. And there is a wash basin that dates back to the 12th century. More architectural fragments. And here's a wonderful model of the castle itself and a statue of the man who restored Carcassonne and many of the other historic towns of France, Villa le Duc. And these were the actual living spaces back in the 13th century when this was home to the Lord of the Manor. There's a wonderful exhibit with a series of Gothic fragments from architecture. They've got statues. It's just an astonishing place. This is really a medieval experience and makes it well worth your trip to come down to the city of Carcassonne and spend some time touring through the old town and especially entering into the castle. It's believed that this castle was first built from about the year 1130, which puts it deep into the Middle Ages. And then it was occupied for hundreds of years. You're free to walk around inside the castle and explore the various rooms, some of the staircases, and you'll get nice views looking out the windows and from the walkways along the wall, all around the different sides of the castle. Just being in the structure itself is perhaps even more interesting than looking at the artifacts that it contains. You see the front gateway, it forms a barbican that defended the front door of the castle. This time we're going out in the evening and we're going back down into the new town at night. It's a different scene at night, especially on a slightly drizzly night. The market square is empty, but the local folks are out, passing by the Fine Art Museum on one of the big squares. We're retracing our steps in the evening in order to get this view. Oh, this is one of the most spectacular sights in all of Carcassonne. The view of the castle from outside, and especially at twilight. So you really want to make it a point to get down and get this view. You don't have to walk all the way to the new town if you don't want to. You can just walk simply down the path for about five minutes and look back up, or at least 10 minutes over to the bridge across the river, and you will be rewarded with one of the great views of Europe. So hold your camera steady and get a good shot. We've come full circle in the program. Now it's 24 hours later, we're back out on the street with another early morning walk. Nice to get up and out, especially in a beautiful village like this. Starting out for a little reconnaissance walk early in the morning before the hotel even serves breakfast. A very sleepy village at this hour. Here's the central crossroads. On the main street of Carcassonne, so early in the morning, it's just before 8 a.m. and the shops haven't opened yet. It's interesting to come out for this early morning walk. We've really enjoyed this stay at the Best Western Le Donjon Hotel, right in the heart of the fortified village, at a reasonable price. There's also a youth hostel available right inside the fortified walls. So there's three small hotels and a youth hostel. Breakfast is included in the price of your room in nearly all European hotels, so it makes a good start for the day. And our friendly breakfast lady is setting out those delicious croissants. You've got coffee and cereals, some fruits, 
it's a nice time to chat with your fellow travelers, catch up on what happened last night and get ready for the day ahead. There are three hotels inside the walls. The most deluxe of these hotels is certainly the Hotel de la Cité, a wonderful garden out back. There's a restaurant that has a Michelin star where you can actually enjoy an affordable, delicious lunch, even if you're not a guest. It's on the site of the former Archbishop's Palace in a beautiful mansion that was constructed at the beginning of the 20th century. Here's a rapid fire history of Carcassonne. Fasten your safety belts. People have lived in this area for thousands of years. The Romans arrived in the first century BC and established a city. They built a wall around it and fortifications and palaces. The Roman Empire fell, the Visigoths took over. The Franks came in. The Muslims invaded, but stayed just for a few decades. A thousand years ago, the Trencavel Viscount dynasty gained control and stayed for 200 years. In the early 13th century, Caucasone became a stronghold of a Christian religious sect called the Cathars. They were considered heretics by the church in Rome because Cathars had their own sacraments and they did not believe that Jesus was sent to bring redemption to the human race. These Cathar beliefs were not acceptable to the church and so Pope Innocent III recalled his crusaders from the Holy Land to go and fight against his own kindred. The crusading army forced the citizens to surrender and leave their city. And from that point on, it was all France, all the time. By 1700, Carcassonne lost its strategic position guarding the border with Spain, which was moved further south. Their main industry became manufacture of textiles, which later failed after competition from abroad. And the place began to decline. People moved out, the buildings began to fall down. French government decided to demolish the whole thing in the mid 19th century, but the people reacted, a conservation movement grew and it was rescued, renovated, and rebuilt. Tourists began to arrive and enjoy it early in the 20th century, and since then its popularity has constantly grown, with currently over two million visitors in the average year, the second most popular historic monument in France, after Mont Saint-Michel, becoming one of the world's great historic sites. Our big challenge for this day is getting out of town and moving along to the next city on our itinerary. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.